Have you ever wondered how you can flush your toilet and only a few days later drink that same water? Me too. That is why in today's lab, we will be determining how to clean wastewater. In this lab, you will be given a sample of dirty water. Our goal is to get it to be clean water through a series of chemical steps. But first, you've got to shake it, shake it, shake it to get it well mixed. It should turn into a homogeneous mixture. As mentioned before, today's lab is fairly simple. We will start primarily with barium nitrate, sand, and clay. Now, barium nitrate and clay are both soluble in water. So if we allow it to settle, or if we use a centrifuge, we will allow these two to be separated from the sand. Before using the centrifuge, we have to learn some basic rules about it. The first thing is never open the lid until the rotation has stopped. To open the lid, merely pull up on this lever and open the hatch. You can insert your sample into one of these holes, but you have to be careful that you can actually close the lid. In this example, we cannot close the lid. So what we have to do is we have to find smaller test tubes. Here I have some smaller test tubes. I will transfer the liquids into these smaller test tubes and put them back into the centrifuge. Now that we can properly close the lid, we can go ahead and start the centrifuge. But we have to make sure that we balance our weight. So if I put this sand and clay into this side, I have to make sure that the side opposite of it gets an equal amount of weight. Otherwise, when it starts spinning, this side will kind of be top heavy and it'll start spinning madly out of control. But seriously, we need to balance our weights. So make sure you insert a test tube with an equal amount of water into the other side. Normally, five minutes should be more than enough. Now that our centrifuge has come to a complete stop, we can go ahead and open it and see how well our water cleared. Once the centrifuge has safely come to a complete stop, we can go ahead and unlatch it and look at our sample. Notice how it is still a little bit murky, but all of the sand has been removed. We can now go ahead and attempt to clear out the rest of the contaminants from our water. Now all we should have left in solution is barium nitrate and clay. To help remove the clay, we will use iron chloride. The iron molecules will help remove the clay from solution. We are going to use approximately one milliliter of iron chloride to precipitate our clay. The positively charged iron molecules will react with the negatively charged clay to help remove it from solution. Obviously, you will not be doing this in this vessel. This is only for demonstration purposes. Once mixed, we can run this through our centrifuge. You may not be able to see the difference, but trust me, there is plenty of iron and clay left behind. Okay. So now that we have excess iron in solution, we need to add, we need to remove that with the hydroxide. We're going to go ahead and add the sodium hydroxide, and you will immediately see a reaction. After centrifugation, you should have something that looks kind of like this. Now the final step is to dilute with sulfuric acid. I recommend using a dilute substance as to avoid adding too much sulfuric acid. As you notice, as we add sulfuric acid, we will see a precipitate form. This precipitate is barium sulfate, and it will all need to be removed. And finally, we will have to adjust our pH to as close to 7 as possible using sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Make sure to use highly dilute solutions as to avoid overcompensating for pH. So, let's just cover the basics again. We started with sand, barium nitrate, and clay. Now, the, the sand simply falls out of solution. The clay has to be reacted with iron in order for it to fall out. Now, we will have excess iron, which must be reacted with sodium hydroxide. And finally, 
The barium will react with the sulfate to fall out and you can neutralize the hydroxide with sulfuric acid. Two birds with one stone. Now once again, be very careful about adding too much sodium hydroxide or too much sulfuric acid because what you will do is you will just add more salt to the water. This will increase conductivity and will show in your final results. There are very few calculations in this lab, so hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Oh, after making all these videos, I'm about to drop dead. Hey Dan, what do you do with a dead chemist? You bury him.